How's it going, everyone? Welcome to or welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going over some of the new precons from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Now, normally I do these as thematic precons, but we don't have a lot of cards in the main set to work on. So instead, I'm going to go over some upgrades for the decks that I think would work really well here, as well as some pricier upgrades that you may want to invest in if you want to spend that kind of money. But for now, let's get into the Desert Bloom precon and talk about what we can do with this deck. So let's kick this off with the commander that we're going to keep in the deck. And that is the front face Yuma Proud Protector. Five, a red, a green, and a white. It's a 6-6 six, six human ranger. The spell costs one less to cast for each land in your graveyard. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you can sack a land. And if you do, draw a card. And whenever a desert is put into your graveyard from anywhere, create a 4-2 green plant warrior creature token with reach, also known as a cactus. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create these tokens off of Yuma here. And that's why I said this is a lands deck first and foremost. You're going to be juggling lands. Now, there is a commander that I have actually have in my collection I built years ago before all these other types of land decks with like Lord Windgrace and Soul of Windgrace ever came around. And that is Titania, the protector of Argoth. And she's actually included in the precon itself. So we're going to bend that and try to make it work a lot better here as well. Let's also take a look at some of the new cards that are coming in here that support our theme, starting with Dune Chancer for two and a green, a two, three plant druid with reach lands you control and all land cards you own that aren't on the battlefield or deserts. In addition to their other types, lands you control have tap, add one mana of any color and tap mill to gain one life. Each land card milled this way. So the cool thing here is it turns all your stuff into deserts. It can self mill, which if Yuma's on the board, it looks at that and goes, okay, there's a, a desert got put in the graveyard from anywhere. So it's going to create a four, two for each of those. So this contributes to that type of effect. They also made a card for Yuma's little plant buddy there in his main card, Kiri talented sprout for one red, green, white. It's a zero three plant druid. Other plants and tree folk you control get plus two, plus zero. So then the uh, tokens that Yuma makes are six twos. And then at the beginning of your post-combat uh, main phase, return target plant, tree folk, or land card from your graveyard to your hand. So as we're sacrificing lands and stuff, we can bring them back to our hand and replay them at the beginning of that phase and just keep cycling through our lands over and over again. Then sticking with these lands theme here, they've made a new card called Rumbleweed for 10 and a green. It's an 8-8. Eight, eight, with Vigilance, Reach, and Trample, it costs one less for each land card in your graveyard. And when it enters the battlefield, all other creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and trample until end of turn. So this is Crater Hoof Light, but it gets cheaper for each land in the graveyard, which is fine because we're going to be sacrificing lands, milling lands, and all this other stuff. So this may only cost, you know, three, four, five mana for an 8-8 eight, eight trampler that's going to give all of our other stuff a bunch of power and trample as well. And then there's Sand Scout. For one and a white, it's a 2-2 human scout when it enters the battlefield. If an opponent controls more lands than you, search your library for a desert, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. And then whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, create a 1-1 one, one red, green, and white Sand Warrior creature token, but it only triggers once per turn. So this goes hand in hand with another card that they put in here. It's a reprint from the Dominaria United um, box topper type cards. With Hazazon, Shaper of Sand, it's a red, green, white, 3-3. Three, three. Desert Walk, you can play deserts from your graveyard. So as we're sacking and milling those into the graveyard, we can replay them from the graveyard. And whenever a desert enters the battlefield under your control, create two 1-1 one, one red, green, white Sand Warrior creature tokens. So as we can get multiple lands into play at the same time off of some things, which some of our upgrades are going to do for us, then Hazazon here can actually go ahead and uh, give us a bunch of Sand Warrior tokens as well. Then getting out of the creatures, we're going to take a look at some of the other spells they've put in this deck, starting with Cataclysmic Prospecting for X Red Red. It's a sorcery that deals X damage to each creature, so it's like an earthquake-type ability. For each mana from a desert spent to cast this spell, create a tab treasure token. So you're going to get quite a few treasures off of this because a, a decent, if not about half the land base in this deck, are deserts. And if you have the Dune Channer on the board that we talked about a little bit ago, it's going to give all your mana into it as deserts, and you're going to get a bunch of treasures off of this to cast other things later. They've also come up with a new impulse draw effect called Embrace the Unknown. For two and a red, it's a sorcery. Exile the top two cards of your library until end of turn. Until the end of your next turn, I should say, you may play those cards, and it has retrace. Now, for three mana, this is a little more expensive than most impulse draw effects. 
But since this has retrace, it actually costs slightly more. But since we can use this over and over and over again, it's kind of nice. And the retrace ability lets you discard lands. So with Yuma on the board, you discard a land to retrace, embrace the unknown. You get a plant token and you get to uh, impulse draw the two cards off the embrace. And you can do that over and over and over again. So if you're stuck with a bunch of lands you don't know what to do with, this is a great way to get rid of them and get more plant tokens off of it. And then the last new card out of the pre-con I want to talk about is Vengeful regrowth for four green green you get a sorcery that says return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tap create that many four two green plant warrior creature tokens with reach and it has flashback of six green green but once again in the lands matters theme here as we're sacking lands discarding lands milling lands whatever we can bring a bunch of them back all at once with vengeful regrowth bring them to the battlefield and we're able to go ahead and just keep going with our stuff. And then we can sacrifice them to other things and make more plant tokens off of Yuma. It's just a nice synergistic ball is what it turns into. Now in the past, I used to talk about all my cuts and my reasonings for the cuts. And then I would go into what I'm adding. So I'm changing it up just a little bit for this series of pre-con videos. I'm going to give you what I'm cutting and what I'm replacing it with in the same section. And then that way it kind of makes more sense as to what I'm doing with the cards. So let's start off with Marshall's Anthem. I'm cutting this out of the deck. It's an Anthem effect that costs more than most Anthem effects cost. Usually they're around three. This costs four. And the multi-kicker ability on here is only going to get us some creatures back. And it's kind of pricey considering most of the mana base that we have in the deck comes into play tapped. So by the time we can get this thing online, that plus one plus one is going to be pretty much nothing. And on top of that, you know, being able to return a creature, you're going to be on turn seven or eight before you're even able to return one or two creatures. I just don't find this card to be worthwhile. But what I can use a lot earlier, and I can do it all the time, and I can get lands back as well, is Conduit of Worlds for two green green. You can play lands from your graveyard, so it gives us a little more redundancy with some of the other cards that were already in the deck to allow us to play lands from our graveyard. And we can tap and choose a non-land permanent in our graveyard, and as long as we haven't cast a spell this turn, we can cast that card out of the graveyard. So we can get anything back with this, not just creatures. We can get our enchantments, or you know any of the permanents that are in the yard we can bring back with the conduit so i really like this card being in this particular setup i'm also going to remove the genesis hydra for x green green and the zero zero plant you know you get to reveal cards and put non-land permanents into the battlefield and you put counters on here well, we're, we're more worried about the lands in the deck than we are non-lands it really just doesn't fit the theme of what the deck is trying to do so let's try to get something else in here that works a little bit nicer with the lands theme and that is going to be Croson Restorer. I'm going to add this in two and a green tap, untap target land. If you have threshold, which we should have the ability to get there because we're sacking, dishing, and milling stuff into the yard, tap, untap up to three target lands. Activate only if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard. So this is really cool in this deck because we're getting so much stuff coming into play tapped. If you play, you know, a land or two and they come in tapped or you bring them back from the yard and they come in tapped or whatever the thing is going on, Gross and Restorer can then just be like, nope, they're untapped and now I can use them. And even if you only get one untapped, that's still useful. But like I said, you can get Threshold pretty easy in this deck, so you should be untapping three lands at a time with this. The next removal force is going to be Eccentric Farmer. Two and a green, it mills three, and you return a land card from the graveyard to your hand. One shot like this, I'm not real a fan of. Let's get some multi-shot things off the land stuff by including a copy of Life from the Loam instead. For one and a green, return up to three target land cards from the graveyard to your hand, and you can dredge three. And you can do this repeatedly, because then you can go, okay, I'm going to dredge all mill. Oh, Yuma's on the board. Two lands went in the yard. Here comes two four twos. And then I can bring those lands back to my hand. I can play them, or I can discard them to effects or whatever and just keep doing that over and over and over again so this card is just that much better than the creature then i'm also going to cut the copy of explore one in the green play an additional land this turn draw a card you know it's great but it's a one shot effect let's get something that's a little more repeatable you don't get the card off of it but you get a dinosaur off of it and that is wayward sword tooth two in a green you have a send you can play it you can attack and block with it if you have a send you can play additional lands on each of your turns. So you get to play an additional land every turn rather than worrying about just that one shot card draw. So I like this a lot better in the deck. And speaking of draw, we're going to take out the copy of Escape to the Wilds, the three red green exile top five, and you can play an additional land this turn and you can play those cards until your next turn. 
while that's great and all, you can accidentally, because there's some expensive stuff in this deck, you can accidentally lose some important spells off of this. And being able to play an additional land one time, it really isn't that great. I would rather have some better draw that doesn't make me lose the stuff just for that and trade off that one additional land. And so we're going to slot in Shamanic Revelation. Three green green, draw a card for each creature you control, and you gain four life for each creature with power four or greater. Well, all the plant tokens you make off of Yuma, they're four power. So on top of getting a card off of them anyways, you're going to gain four life. So this helps balance off our life losses in, throughout the game, as well as getting a big burst of cards that we don't have to worry about losing to an exile. Then we're going to get rid of one of the more mediocre cards from the pre-con, and that's Scare Tiller. For four colorless, one four, when it becomes tapped, you can either put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped or return one from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Not a huge fan of this. It likely gets blocked and destroyed. We don't have a bunch of Convoke in the deck to tap it and you know, reuse it that way without putting it into harm's way. There's just not things that make me want to play this. So instead, I'm going to slot in a copy of Splendid Reclamation for three and a green. Return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So all this milling, discarding, sacrificing, all this stuff, we can just bring it all back in one big burst and slam it on the battlefield and have it ready to go. Now, since this deck is very, very heavy on non-basic lands we're going to take out spring bloom druid the two in a green one one and when it enters you can sack a land and if you do search for two basics and put them onto the battlefield you know it's a great effect but there's not a ton of basics in the deck to begin with sacrificing one land for this is just not that great so instead we're going to bring it in so we can play multiple lands off of azusa lost but seeking for two in a green it's a one two uh, you can play two additional lands on your turn, so we can kind of make up for the lands coming into play tapped by playing them two at a time so we get ahead on the curve of mana later. I'm also not a huge fan of Perpetual Timepiece. It allows us to mill, but then it lets us shuffle the cards back into our library as well. But I would rather have the brand new card out of uh, Murders at Karlov Manor, Aftermath Analyst. For one in a green, one three, Elf Detected, that when it enters the battlefield, you mill three. So you still get some mill off of this. And then you can pay three in a green and sack it to return all land cards from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. But you have a way to get your stuff back that has been pitched into the yard anyways. So I prefer this over the perpetual timepiece. We're also going to remove the copy of Crawling Sensation. Two in a green, you can mill... Mill the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, and if one or more lands are put there, you get a 1-1 one, one Insect. Not exactly a very compelling card, because you can only get the 1-1 one, one Insects when you mill during the beginning of your upkeep trigger. So it's not that great, but I'm going to replace it with another 3-mana green enchantment in Spelunking. When it, it enters the battlefield, draw a card. You can put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield, and if you put a cave on the battlefield this way, you gain four life. That part doesn't matter because we're not running caves. But the big thing here is land you control enter untapped. So this is a way to get around all this extraneous tapped land stuff that we have going on in the deck. It makes it so it comes into play untapped so we can have our stuff ready to go right away. Now the next removal doesn't have a card I'm replacing with the same kind of effect, but we're going to take out Skull Winder, three mana, one, three death toucher that lets you return a card from your hand, but then it also lets an opponent do the same thing. I'm not a big fan of letting my opponents get stuff back from their graveyard because if I've worked to get rid of it, I want it to stay gone. Uh, we're going to actually replace this though with Primal Vigor, four and a green. If you were create uh, one or more tokens, you do double that and plus one, plus one counters, double those instead, but it's also counts to your opponents. So depending on your play group, if you have somebody that's got a token deck or a plus one plus one counter deck, you may not want to run this. You may want to run some other kind of card. But for me, I wanted to have the ability to double up the four twos and get those out of the deck in faster fashion to put pressure on our opponents. And I'd prefer to play this over the skull liner. Next up is a pair of removal spells. We're going to remove the unholy heat from the deck. Being able to shock something really isn't that great. Having Delirium is a little bit harder than you would think it is in this particular deck because there's not a lot of different stuff. You only have a few different things to get into the yard for your sorceries and your instants. And so it's it's a little harder to hit the Delirium on this. So instead, let's replace it with a much better one mana removal spell in Swords to Plowshares. Exile Terror Creature, its controller gains life equal to the power. We already have Exile or Path to Exile that was included in the pre-con. So let's go ahead and get Swords to Plowshares as well. Give two pieces of nice removal on the deck that just gets rid of stuff for the rest of the game. And the last card I'm going to remove and replace is Heaven and Earth. Heaven side deals X to flying creatures. Earth side deals X to non-flying creatures. I'm not a fan of restrictive removal like this because... 
your opponents may not have a ton of flying, and then that means the front half of this card is dead unless you're able to discard it or mill it into your graveyard to get to the earth side, because you cannot cast the aftermath side unless it's in your graveyard. So you may have to spend you know, a green just to throw this thing in your yard and then be able to cast the earth side, and that feels kind of hokey. So let's put something else in here that's a little more... Yeah, flexible, I would say. In spiteful banditry for X red red enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, deal X to each creature. Whenever one or more creatures your opponent's control dies, create a treasure token. This ability triggers only a turn. So this thing is able to be scaled up just like the heaven and earth, but we can decide when we're going to do it. And it can hit both flying and non-flying creatures. So I like that this is here. And unless you have an opponent that is... Gaga for flying creatures in their deck. The Heaven Earth is just not a good card in the deck. Now, normally I don't talk about lands in the decks. I usually just do the land bases and let you guys read through them. But there are th some lands I want to add to this deck in particular. Since we're talking about milling cards and putting your, uh, lands in the graveyard and that are good here, I want to include the three uh, lands that go with this from Murders of Karloff Manor that have the surveil mechanic attached to them with Commercial District, Elegant Parlor, and Lush Portico. And I also want to add the new Arid Archway card because it has a surveil trigger on it and it taps for two, so it's kind of like a soul ring land for us. And it's a desert, and I'm kind of surprised they didn't include it in the pre-con since it was in the main set and they already have some other main set cards in there, but they did not include it for some reason. So for that, I would cut out the Sun Scorched Divide, Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds, and one of the Plains cards in order to fit these in. Sun Scorched Divide is actually a reprint from the new Fallout pre-cons. They, they just put these into the game. And it's kind of nice that they're going to give us an, a magic version of them. But in this deck, I want more things that affect what we're trying to do in terms of putting lands into the graveyard that don't. And I want things that are going to be multicolored rather than using the Terramorphic Expanse and the Evolving Wilds going for the limited basics in the deck. And instead, we'll get the Surveil lands on board instead. And the last section of this video is going to be talking about some pricier upgrades if you want to. I'm trying to keep the costs under control for players who don't want to spend a lot of money to do the upgrading to these decks. So you're already spending $35 to $45 on these precons, depending on where you're getting them from. So let's make this a little bit easier with the stuff I get mentioned earlier. But if you really want to power these things up, these are the cards I would include. Some of these are cards that I have in my Titania deck. So I know the power level works really good here and I would run them if I was building this deck. So let's start with Doubling Season. It's the better version of Primal Vigor. Double your tokens, double your plus one, plus one counters and it does not affect your opponents. But it's also about a 40 hour card right now. Then I'd also include Nissa Resurgent Animus, the landfall trigger uh, druid from the Aftermath set and probably the money chase card from there because it's about $30 right now. Uh, first landfall trigger, you get a uh, search for an elf out of your deck and then the rest of it goes and gives you mana along the line. It's just a really good card here, especially if you can use things to get your lands back out of your yard in mass. I also would include a copy of Crucible of Worlds. Now, there are already a lot of spells in there and things I've done to play cards out of your yard, but I love this card. It's a great redundancy in case those things, because those things are usually attached to creatures. They get easily blown up, whereas Crucible is a little harder to get rid of. I would also include Scape Shift. Now, this card is really good because we can get lands back out of our yard that we've been knocking in there, and we get to sacrifice a bunch of them in mass. And if Yuma's out, we're going to get a bunch of 4-2 of the tokens and we're going to get to swap some more stuff back out of the yard onto the battlefield we're also going to include a copy of constant mist now this card is an older card from temp or actually stronghold excuse me one in a green constant mist instant buyback sack of land uh, it fogs your opponents so the creatures aren't going to deal any damage so you not only save yourself, you get to buy it back by sacking a land every time and then you create another 4-2 off of Yuma or you get our other land interactions by sacrificing lands into the graveyard. So there's just a lot of good uses for Constant Mist. Unfortunately, they've just never reprinted it since Stronghold, so that's why the cost is about $15 right now. And I think it's because it has the buyback mechanic, which is really high on the Storm scale, and they have never reprinted a card with buyback other than, I think, reiterate. I think that was like the last time they did it, and that was almost 10 years ago. I'd also want to include a copy of Greater Good. Now, this was just reprinted in the Sheldon Spellbook. So a lot of you guys are probably, if you bought that, you're going to have a copy of that coming your way. Uh, four mana, sack a creature, draw three, or draw cards equal to the power, discard three cards. So it's really good card to have, especially if you have these four twos, because you're going to draw four, discard three. So you're, you're still going to be going up one. And if you're, dis if you're sacking the creature, 
goes to the yard, you draw the four, and if you say you draw three lands and you discard three lands and they're all deserts, well, guess what? That's three more four twos coming into the battlefield for you to mess around with later. So that's just a really good plan there. I'd also include a copy of a card that I'm actually surprised is so expensive. It's Sylvan Safekeeper for a green. It's a 1-1 one, one human wizard that says sack a land to a creature gain shroud until it returns. So this is a great way to protect our most important things like Yuma and stuff like that. And gives us a, a, a sack engine for our lands to create more 4-2s. So you could set it up at the end of somebody's turn to go, okay, I'm going to sack, you know, two or three lands, get a bunch of 4-2s and then go for like the alpha strike and smack somebody upside the head. And then the last card I would recommend, and I don't own a copy of this, is Amulet of Vigor. We talked about Spelunking earlier, allowing us to get our lands to come into play untapped. Well, Amulet of Vigor would do the exact same thing, but unfortunately this card is around $30 right now. So it's a lot more expensive than I'm willing to put into this deck unless you're wanting to do so yourself. I don't recommend messing with it, but it would be a great addition to this deck. So that's what I have for you guys today with the Desert Bloom Precon. Not a thematic upgrade like I usually do. It's just we don't have any of the Old West type cards outside of the main set and stuff. And they already included a lot of stuff I would put in here in the out of there in the Precon. So instead, we went with some more thematic upgrades in terms of lands producing things and doing things with that trigger off of Yuma. With that said, I hope you like what happened here. If you do... Give it a like, comment, subscribe. All those things help my channel grow as I'm on my road to my first thousand subscribers. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a great day. And the other pre-con videos are coming later this week.